is about the proceed, appeal procedure and how this relates to civil tools. I've earlier talked about special commissioners court. I talked about high court. All right. So then under bullet point form one, form Q. All right. When you and when the taxpayer receives an assessment that the taxpayer is not satisfied with, right? It could have been an additional assessment saying that you ought to have paid, you know, ought to pay now an additional assessment of let's say a million ringgit. You have underpaid tax and now I give you an assess a notice of assessment telling you that you ought to pay one million more. And that is a notice of additional assessment. So if you are not happy with the assessment to having to pay one million more, you must under the law file your appeal against that notice of assessment within 30 days upon you receiving the notice of assessment. Right, the date of the notice of the assessment and the date that you actually receive the notice of assessments could differ. So the 30 days starts from the date that you have notice of the assessment. Okay. Uh, form, it is basically commonly known as Form Q. Form Q is basically the notice of appeal to whom? To the special commissioners of income tax. All right. There, there are nevertheless there are quite a few procedural rules that you know as taxpayers you also need to take note of okay firstly is that you know the form q or the notice of appeal uh, is to be signed personally by the individual taxpayer and if the taxpayer is actually a company then it can be signed by the director or secretary of the company it cannot be signed by the tax agent or lawyers representing the taxpayer better than mine uh, I've encountered cases where you know the clients told us that it, it had been signed by not by uh, the IRP had actually rejected when uh, the submissions of the appeal, uh, this uh, notice of appeal, when they actually went over the counter and, and tried to submit it, then they were actually rejected by the officer manning the counter, saying that you know the sanitary is uh, is not an accepted person to sign the form sheet. So that, there, there are instances that we have actually encountered. And the second rule is this. The Form Q is essentially an appeal against the assessment to the special commissioners of income tax. Uh, but the Form Q is to be submitted not to the courts, but to the IRB branch where the uh, taxpayer maintains a uh, tax file. All right? Four copies. Uh, of the form Q are to be submitted to the IRB. And the third, the third procedure rule is that the grounds of appeal must be stated clearly and succinctly in the notice of appeal, the form Q. So uh, general statements such as, you know, the tax are actually excessive. You know, I, I, I'm appealing, the, uh, I, I, uh, I'm, I do not agree with the assessment because I, I argue that the assessment is actually excessive, you know, and full stop. Okay, without giving reasons as to why you find it to be excessive, uh, is not acceptable. All right, so so you need to give reasons as to why uh, you are actually contesting the assessment. All right. So then the next issue is that what happens if you do not uh, file your notice of appeal uh, within the day? All right, then, then you have an opportunity to apply for an extension of time. And the form used is commonly known uh, as Form N. So Form N is actually an application for extension of time, uh, whereby you, have, you, you fill up the form uh, and then give your reasons as to why you are asking for an extension of time. The application will first be decided by the Director General of Income Tax. So the Director General of Income Tax has the discretion to allow or disallow the EOT. So in the event that the extension is allowed, then you will be allowed to file your point beyond 30 days. But if the DG uh, refuses the application, then the DG will then have to uh, forward the form N the application for EOT to the Special Commission of Income Tax. Whereby then, when it reaches the Special Commissioners, then the Special Commissioners will, will uh, you 
invite parties, both sides, the taxpayer as well as the IRB side to uh, submit on the merits of the EOT. Then the decision will be made by the special commissioners, which according to the uh, income tax test is final. All right. So that is the form N. So then the next question is, that, okay, what happens after you file in your appeal notice? All right. Under the law, the Director General of Income Tax, you know, the head of the IRB, uh, has 12 months, 12 months uh, to decide on the appeal. So you have written, you know, you have contest, you're contesting the, the assessment. And then the IRB side can actually say that I'm not going to do anything about it for a period of 12 months. All right. So of course, during these 12 months, you know, parties can engage in negotiation, you know, I, 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 I want a deduction, you know, I, 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 I want to appeal against this based on this. And then uh, if the IRB uh, agrees to, to your representation, then they have actually the power to, uh, to vary the, the assessment without having to go to the courts. Uh, within these 12 months, that, let's say the, you know, many a time the IRB would, my, our experience that they have not given in. So after the 12 months, then they will have to refer the appeal uh, to the special commission of income tax. So then the appeal will only after with a maximum of 12 months be transferred over to the courts. Uh, and then the hearing, you know, the case, what we call the case management, the preparation for the appeal and the hearing before the special commissioners of income tax will then only uh, proceed. On experience, that is actually a very, very heavy backlog at the special commissioners court. Uh, and you will not be surprised that the special commissioners, the hearing or the trial of an appeal can take years three years, four years, uh, to be dealt with by the special commissioners, right? And during this time, when the matter is being appealed against, the matter had not even been heard or scheduled to be heard by the courts, uh, you are supposed, taxpayers are supposed to pay the tax assessed first and uh, appeal later. And how do the income tax department then deal with this pay first, appeal later? What, will they, what they, they will do is that the, if, if the matter cannot be resolved between the taxpayer and the, uh, and the RRB, uh, they will, as a matter of their practice, commence civil litigation against the taxpayer. They will file the civil litigation in court, uh, essentially as a simple, straightforward recovery action of a debt owed by the taxpayer to the government of Malaysia, right? And when, when that happens, the law, the Income Tax Act actually provides that the High Court has no power at all, no jurisdiction to deal with the merits of the appeal, right? If you go back to the High Court and says, you cannot enter judgment against me because the, the, the assessment is uh, excessive. Uh, I'm still have an appeal before the special commissioners that haven't been heard. You know, the assessment have been incorrectly raised and you give actually good reasons for it. Uh, you will not succeed because it is very clear in the Income Tax Act that the High Court is not the proper court to hear merits of an income tax dispute. So they will be able to get, the IRB will be able to get a quick judgment. They will file a summary judgment and they will, based on the, the law uh, that are on their side, be able to obtain summary judgment. Okay, and then of course, uh, advisable for taxpayers to actually pay first, right? In order not to, to be engaged in court litigation and also to reduce the, the, the penalty. Uh, that the IRB would uh, would actually impose uh, for late payment, uh, right? So this is like.